the pious elders of the deen with regards to reading these verses, these kalamat, the method that they have mentioned is that to recite these verses, the servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, after doing a very great act of worship, he is doing a dua, he is supplicating, he is requesting Allah. So, we use different method, just like first of all, Ya Qadi al Hajat. This is a series of duas. So, first we say Ya Qadi al Hajat. So, whenever an individual recites this kalima, then alongside this, that kalima, that statement, according to that statement, he presents it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like, for example, I read Ya Qadi al Hajat. So, at this moment in time, your hajat, your needs, your requirements, present them in Allah's service. Whatever. Service, whatever needs you have, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way, every kalima, every statement, the meaning of it, whenever we recite it, Ya kafi al muhimmat. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our, all of our situation, circumstances, our condition, whatever is facing us, Allah make them easy and smooth. You are enough for our needs. So you're asking Allah for this. Ya dafi al baliyat. This is a fantastic, brilliant dua statement. Excellent dua that the servant always is faced with difficulties, challenges, sorrows. There's no guarantee. We don't know that when we leave here, when we exit here, what difficulty may confront us. What could happen? What difficulty could come? What tragedy could come? What circumstances could come? Because difficulties, sorrows, they are raining down from the skies. So this is a great protection. A massive protection that when a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does dua and he prays and he asks Allah for protection. Oh my mawla, my lord, all the difficulties and sorrows and tragedies, baliyat, whatever is written in my destiny, Allah, please with your fadl grace, please delay them, take them away and protect us. So all these duas that we are reciting, with every dua, present your needs definitely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With yaqeen. With faith, belief that dua is such an action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He definitely, definitely accepts the dua, the supplication of His servant. But according to His choice and will, whatever from our mouth, whatever dua comes out of our mouth, Allah has promised that definitely is accepted. It's accepted. It's received. And at that time Allah could give. Because... Allah is Hakim, He knows best that this dua, should I give Him now, respond straight away, or should I give to Him after some time? The Anbiya Karam, the duas after 40 years, they used to be uh, accepted. So in, don't keep in your mind and heart a doubt that my dua has not been accepted. Always, definitely Allah Ta'ala accepts the dua of His servant, the supplication, the request. If we don't get it in the dunya, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it a treasure of the hereafter for you, that dua. Rather, when you go there, the servant will desire that Allah ta'ala in the dunya, this dua, if only you had not accepted my duas in the world, so I could have seen the effects of the dua in the hereafter that I would have received them. So this is great ni'mah, treasure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his servant, he allows him, permits his servant to do dua. That individual dua in the hadith it stated, dua, supplication when a human being asks for dua, then consider the door of Allah's rahmah mercy is opened on that person. So we are dependent, we are dependent on Allah, we have sicknesses, problems, difficulties, hajat, needs, requirements. So who should we ask for? Who should we ask for? What is it? Who should we request the help, assistance from? Allah says, my servant. Allah directly says, ask from me. My servant, what an example Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given. That even a small example he gave and he stated that even your lace on the shoe, it breaks even that you should ask from Allah. Even Allah gives that. Everything Allah Ta'ala gives. Everything that you need. Second point is this, that when we are asking from Allah, that can we, not, we can't even see we're getting it maybe, but remember 
the sign of the dua being accepted is, is that in compensation for that, Allah gives you peace of heart, makes you content, satisfied. The reason that gives you distress in the life, Allah will put peace into that circumstance. There are various methods the way that Allah Ta'ala accepts a dua. There's a door, Allah's rahmah, mercy comes. So the meaning of what I'm trying to say is that right now, consider this is a precious time with every dua, definitely in your heart, mind, you should have the dua. Whenever you recite a kalima statement, the dua should be in parallel to that. The request should be in parallel to that. Recite the Ruchni.